Welcome to Episode 3 of Sequelology. In the late 1980s, New Line Cinema, who'd found success with the Nightmare on Elm Street series, bought the rights to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from Canon to try and flip it into a new, enduring horror series. They reported they wanted to go back to hardcore horror, and stated their intent to spotlight Leatherface into a big, unique star monster, more like Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees, a singular killing machine, rather than the muscle of a familial unit. New Line had planned to hire Toby Hooper again, but he was busy on his film Spontaneous Combustion, and bowed out. They had pretty much everything set up other than the director. One of the finalists for that position was reportedly Peter Jackson, then known for gross-out gore comedies like Bad Taste and Meet the Feebles. But winning the job was Jeff Burr, who was coming off a decently well-regarded sequel to the domestic horror film The Stepfather. The production was already underway when Burr came on, and at one point tensions got so heated that the producers fired him, but couldn't find anyone else to take it on and rehired him to get the film completed. I had wondered how the film was going to justify its setup following the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, where the entire villain family is seemingly killed. I had assumed they were going to just barrel on without explanation, but instead, that explanation, in our opening crawl, is a complete retcon. Now, Sally died in a hospital, a few years after the first film took place. W.E. Sawyer, which I'm assuming is the old man, was arrested and put to death, and the courts just assumed Leatherface was an alternate personality of his, so they didn't investigate further. As for the film itself, we meet Ryan and Michelle, a couple planning to separate, driving through Texas on a cross-country car delivery. They're delayed by the discovery of a giant pit of bodies off the interstate, and stop at a gas station in the town of Last Chance where they're saved from an unhinged peeping Tom attendant by a cowboy named Tex, which holy shit, it's Viggo Mortensen. Tex offers them a time-saving detour, which of course gets them chased and eventually accosted by Leatherface. They flee and nearly hit Tex on the road, flipping their car as well as a jeep driven by weekend survivalist Benny, played by horror film legend Ken Foray. Benny doesn't believe their story, until the same truck shows up and plows into his jeep. Leatherface comes after him, but Benny escapes, and is saved by a bleeding woman who draws Leatherface away. She tells Benny she's the only survivor of the last group of victims. Benny goes to find the others, and the woman gets caught and killed by Leatherface, who also catches Ryan in a trap. Michelle gets to a farmhouse and sees a little girl, who turns out to be part of the villainous family that includes Tex, Alfredo, Tinker, Leatherface, who they call Junior, and Mama. Benny catches up to Alfredo and KOs him into the bog before firing into the house, killing Mama and injuring Tinker. He and Tex brawl in the yard, and Benny blows him up. Michelle gets caught in a trap, but Benny and Leatherface brawl in the water. Leatherface apparently kills Benny, but Michelle blasts him with a rock, and he apparently dies. As the sun rises, Michelle wanders away, and a still-alive Benny pulls up in a truck. Alfredo bludgeons him, but Michelle is able to kill Alfredo, and she and a still-alive Benny drive off in the truck as Leatherface watches them leave. This film had enormous trouble with the MPAA, who made the filmmakers cut out several minutes of gore, making a lot of the most violent scenes borderline incomprehensible. But even worse, a perpetually interfering New Line Studios made the film do reshoots so characters that preview audiences responded well to survived, which makes Ken Foray's Benny look immortal and Leatherface look like a giant useless chump. Unlike the languid specters of doom that Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees are in their respective series, Leatherface, played this time by R.A. Mihailov, moves more like a Walmart assistant manager pursuing shoplifters, and spends all of his threatening moments patiently waiting for people to get away. Leatherface's inability to finish anyone off is actually even a regular point of discussion between the other members of his family, a group of people whose existence or relation to Leatherface is never investigated or explained. 
They refer to him exclusively as Junior, and at one point imply possibly that the young girl may be his daughter, but otherwise do not elaborate at all. These characters are actually the best part of the movie, and their interplay is full of small, genuinely interesting moments. I actually would have enjoyed spending more time with these people, and once again, the only weak link narratively is Leatherface himself, who is presented as a childlike, jokey stereotype of a mentally handicapped person, most egregiously in a scene where he tries to learn on a speaking spell and can't stop typing food for any picture of a human. Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, was never going to be any sort of masterpiece, but constant studio interference and a ratings board with an axe to grind, pun sorta intended, went out of their way to make sure that this film was as unsuccessful as possible. So when it opened in January of 1990, in 11th place, getting outgrossed by a month-old driving Miss Daisy playing on a quarter of the screens, New Line considered it a sunk cost and gave up on it. And that's a shame. Trying to fulfill the original film's spirit while dealing with the fallout of its strange sequel was always going to be difficult. But the villains we got here were interesting, and there's a decent sense of dread in the opening scenes. And this could have pointed towards something genuinely worthwhile, if they had just been allowed to make it. Instead, we got a work that was rushed, compromised, and never really given a chance, and as a result, mostly flounders. Next time, New Line decides to try again with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series, and immediately blows it all up again. We head to prom in Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation, next time on Sequelology. <laughs>